Welcome to our Ecuador tour, where every bite is a journey of biodiversity. On this unforgettable adventure, we'll visit Quito, Cuenca, and Guayaquil, immersing ourselves in this captivating country's vibrant culture and stunning landscapes. We'll also be venturing into the heart of an authentic Ecuadorian farm where Mimi will demonstrate her milking skills, <laughs> saddle up for a thrilling horseback ride, and perhaps even have a hilarious encounter with a mischievous peacock named Kevin. <laughs> and who knows, we may even get our hands dirty and chunklety as we learn the art of crafting our own Ecuadorian chocolate bars. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. From there, we will fly to Darwin's Playground. Yes, we'll go to the Galapagos, the land that time forgot. So come join us on our Ecuador tour, where every bite is a journey of biodiversity, every encounter is a cultural immersion, and every experience is a reminder of the amazing planet that we live on. It is an amazing planet. We can't wait to share the wonders of Ecuador with you. Welcome to Amy and G, Travel the World! Today we're in the Andes. Anybody got any air? Today we're sunshine around here. <laughs> <laughs> First stop, Quito. Quito, a city of altitude, architecture, and a hidden blunder. Mm -hmm. mm. Quito, the capital of Ecuador, is a vibrant cosmopolitan city nestled in the heart of the Andes Mountains. With its stunning colonial architecture, rich cultural heritage, and a diverse natural attraction, Quito is a captivating destination that is sure to leave a lasting impression. A very big impression. Altitude sickness, a rude awakening. At the second highest capital city in the world, Quito sits at an elevation of 9,350 feet. This can be a bit of a shock to the system for those who are not accustomed to such heights. In fact, Mimi and G had been taking high altitude pills for days before we arrived in an effort to stave off the dreaded altitude sickness. Yeah. Did G listen? Yeah. Despite the precautions, G ignored the guide's advice and grabbed his carry-on as soon as we arrived at our hotel. Not even a single flight of stairs later, G was completely wiped out, gasping for breath and sweating profusely. You know, my mom warned me about you. Oh, uh, you didn't listen. I <laughs> should have listened. <laughs> the entire city of Quito is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the, for good reason. As you walk the streets, you're surrounded by stunning examples of colonial architecture, churches, plazas, and government buildings, all vie for your attention, each one more impressive than the last. Quito Cathedral is one of the most impressive cathedrals in South America. The interior is adorned with gold leaf, intricate carvings, and stunning paintings. We attended a service here, and the atmosphere was truly mesmerizing. As we watched the service, we couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and wonder. Amen. No visit to Quito is complete without a trip to the middle of the world monument. This iconic landmark marks the equator, the imaginary line dividing the earth into two halves. Visitors can stand one foot on each hemisphere and take photos with the famous yellow line. However, Oopsie. there's a little secret about the middle <laughs> of the world monument that not many people know. The monument is not actually located on the equator. In 1736, his team of French scientists came to Ecuador to determine the location of the equator. However, they made a mistake in their calculation and the monument is actually located 800 feet south of the true equator. Oh man, but they were close, yeah, quite close enough. El Panacea is a hilltop monument that offers stunning views of Quito and the surrounding mountains. The monument is topped by a giant statue of the Virgin Mary who is said to watch over the city. Visitors can take a cable car, hike, or drive to the top of El Panacea. Once at the top, they can enjoy the panoramic views of Quito and even see the Cotopex volcano in the distance. It is one of the world's most beautiful volcanoes with its snow-capped peaks and symmetrical calm. Cotopex can be seen from the top of El Panacea. Quito is a city of contrast. It is a city of old and new, of tradition and modern progress. It is a city that is both beautiful and chaotic. 
But above all, Quito is a city that is sure to leave a lasting impression on anyone who visits. Ecuador is a tiny country, smaller than the state of Nevada, but it packs massive punch when it comes to biodiversity. Ecuador is home to a staggering 10% of the world's plants, 8% of the world's animals, and 18% of its bird species. That's right. The reason for this incredible biodiversity is simple, altitude. From the towering peaks of the Andes to the luscious rainforest of the Amazon, Ecuador encompasses every altitudinal zone on Earth. This means that within a relatively short distance, you can experience a wide variety of ecosystems, each with its own unique flora and fauna. And you really enjoyed the flowers. So if you're looking for a destination that's bursting with life, Ecuador is the place for you. Most definitely. From Quito, we traveled to Cuenca. From Quito, we went traveled to Quintia. Cuenca. Cuenca. From Quito, we traveled to Cuenca. Welcome to Cuenca, Ecuador, a UNESCO World Heritage Site renowned for its captivating blend of colonial charm and modern flair. Join us on a fascinating walking tour through the city's beautiful streets where exquisite churches and the renowned Panama Hat Factory await. As we stroll along the cobblestone streets, admiring the compelling architecture, adoring Quincy's cityscapes, each edifice whispers tales of a bygone era where elegance and artistry reign supreme. One unusual practice in the city is that some large houses are painted differently on opposite sides. This technique is to make the house look smaller no, I'd say it's a 19th century camouflage. Got to have an alarm system. Our first stop is an all inspired Cathedral de la Immaculada Concepcion, a masterpiece of neoclassical design. Its towering facade and intricate details are sure to leave you mesmerized. As you step inside, you'll be greeted by a breathtaking spectacle of grandeur. The interior is adorned with a gleaming gold leaf, exquisite artwork, and soaring stained glass windows that bathe the space in a radiant glow. Continuing our journey, we visit the Panama Hat Factory, where we witness the artistry and craftsmanship that goes into creating these iconic headpieces. Founded in 1901, the Panama Hat Factory has crafted exquisite hats for over a century. As you observe the skilled artisans meticulously weave to key a straw into magnificent creations, you gain a newfound appreciation for the time and dedication that goes into each hat. The hats at the factory are very inexpensive. If you have ever wanted one, this is the place to get it. Cuenca inspires a deeper appreciation for the captivating beauty and rich heritage. With its exquisite blend of old and new, this enchanting city will leave a lasting impression on all who visit. Leaving Cuenca and traveling down the Andes Mountains, the landscape looks like a scene from the land before time. Our route started at 14,000 feet. Up that high, the roads are under constant assault from Mother Nature. We had to take a four hour detour just to get around the landslide. The topography is rugged, but beautiful. Finally, we arrive at our next stop, La Danesa Hacienda. Embrace rustic charm and authentic experiences at Hacienda La Danesa. La Danesa. Nestled amidst the lush greenery of Ecuador's coastal region, Hacienda La Danesa called to us. It is a fascinating escape from the hustle and bustle of modern life. This family-owned working hacienda, steeped in over 145 years of rich heritage, offers a unique blend of rustic charm and authentic experiences inviting guests to immerse themselves in the rhythm of a bygone era. One of the fun things we did was go horseback riding. <laughs> we did. Our horseback riding adventure traversed up Hacienda's sprawling expanses, adorned with pastures, meandering rivers, and towering cow cow trees. This experience allowed us to connect with the Hacienda's natural beauty and the gentle spirit of the horses. They're gentle till you turn toward the barn, and then it's game on. <laughs> Mimi's horse had a cane problem. He loved to eat sugar cane, so her tour was a lot of stopping for a snack. All in all, it was a lot of fun. It really was. It really was. We actually picked cacao beans and turned them into chocolate bar. 
This was a fascinating look into the world of chocolate making at Hacienda Danessa. We witnessed the transformation of a humble cacao bean into the exquisite chocolate bars from harvesting and fermenting the bean to grinding, refining, and molding them into a delectable treat. We still have one. Well, we do. We have one in the refrigerator. I grew up next to a dairy, so this next thing was a trip back into my past. On the other hand, Mimi, a city girl, embraced the simplicity of the farm life by participating in the traditional practice of milking cows. Mimi learned the general technique of hand milking, gaining an appreciation for the dedication and care that goes into producing fresh milk. I love fresh milk. Then there was Kevin. Kevin was a large male peacock that lived on the farm. He would at times make the most blood-curdling screams. Mimi does not have a mean bone in her body, but one night during a thunderstorm, lightning hit the farm. The power went off, and Kevin let out one of his screams. A sleepy Mimi instantly said, I hope that hit Kevin. Kevin lived, but the story will be alive forever. <laughs> we indulged in a dining journey at the Hacienda's charming restaurant where the chef prepared delectable dishes using the freshest local ingredients grown on the farm. We enjoyed the flavors of the traditional Ecuadorian cuisine, complemented by the Hacienda's own artisanal products. Very artisanal. We're so good. They were Hacienda. La Danesa is more than just a destination. It's an invitation to slow down, reconnect with nature, and experience the authenticity of Ecuadorian culture. Whether you're riding through the countryside, crafting your own chocolate bars, or saving the flavors of the region, La Danesa promises an unforgettable experience that will linger long after you depart and we departed way too fast. We sure did. I would love to stay there a couple more days. I want to go back. Uh, yes. It was a fantastic place. The roads getting in there are terrible, but it's Once worth it. Once you get there, it is great. It is amazing even place. Even Kevin and all, it's great. <laughs> you even would take Kevin I'll again. take Kevin again. <laughs> he was a beautiful bird. He was a beautiful bird, but wow. Over. What a noise. He just had a set along or something. <laughs> I <laughs> He was long. He was letting it be known. Yeah. <laughs> La Dana to the Hacienda was so unique that I would have liked to have extended our stay, but the show must go on. Leaving the rainforest, we are headed to the coastal city of Guayaquil. Welcome to Guayaquil. Guayaquil is Ecuador's largest city, a vibrant and exciting destination with a rich history of culture and natural beauty. We stayed at the Wyndham Costa del Sol. It is a modern and stylish hotel in Guayaquil's heart. The hotel worked great for us because it is centrally located. Steps from the hotel is a bustling open air market. This is the perfect place to find souvenirs, local crafts, and fresh produce. Most definitely, this was the first time Mimi bought something from someone who did not speak our language. It was a great experience. I love playing charades. The open air market was on the Malacone waterfront, a beautiful place to walk and enjoy the river. At the park, the river is three and a half miles across. Walking east of the park, you start entering a colonial center. This change starts when you reach the cobblestone streets. Guayaquil is a city that has something to offer everyone. Whether you're interested in the history, culture, nature, or shopping, you will find something to enjoy in Guayaquil. Now we finish our trip with one of G's bucket list stops, the Galapagos Islands. That is a definite bucket list stop. After a lifetime of anticipation, we landed on Baltra Island, the gateway to the Galapagos. Around the airport stands the remnants of a World War II Air Force base, silent sentinels of a bygone era. Our journey from the airport to Puerto Ayora is an adventure in itself. The bus to the ferry port, a boat ride to Santa Cruz Island, and another bus ride brings us to this enchanting archipelago. Welcome to Mimi and G Travel the World! Today we're in the Galapagos Islands. We stayed at Finch Bay, Galapagos, located in a secluded spot that can only be reached by water taxi. The journey from downtown Puerto Araro, 
Porta Aura is an adventure in itself, adding to the charm of the place and making it hard to access. While the rooms are clean and small, their lack of TVs is a refreshing change for some from the constant stimulation of modern life. Instead, guests can immerse themselves in the beauty of the natural surroundings. And it was beautiful. It was. Even at the pool. <laughs> For those seeking relaxation, the spa offers a variety of treatments. Mimi and Gia enjoyed a couple's massage, and that sure left us feeling refreshed. While there is no private beach, the hotel is on a small bay, perfect for swimming and sunbathing. And looking at the marine iguanas. And the sunrise pictures. The staff at Spitch Bay is accommodating and always eager to help. The grounds are beautifully landscaped and provide a tranquil oasis away from the hustle and bustle of town. Overall, Fitch Bay is a great choice for a peaceful and relaxing getaway in the Galapagos Islands. Its secluded location, excellent amenities, and friendly staff make it an exceptional place. I really enjoyed it. It was neat that they had built the pool just so that the animals would, could come and get yeah. water and, and be in it. The, the, duck. the ducks. What was the mom? Duck. Yeah, duck. What was the mama duck that kept fighting off the other birds? She had babies. Yeah. She was she was definitely protecting those babies. Uh, she even beat up on dad. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very it neat. Was I, I loved Finch Bay, the hotel, and I would definitely go back there. Yes, it was hard to get to. It, it, it was hard to get to. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah. And the restaurant? Oh, the restaurant was excellent. Very accommodating. Every meal we ate there was great, and we ate a lot of meals there. I enjoyed Finch Bay. would definitely go back. Definitely. Day two, it's tortoise time. If you have children and you want to talk about the birds and the bees, this is the place for you. <laughs> We went to the Galapagos El Manzanillo. They have a restaurant and we had lunch there. The food was good. It was a quick bite. And then we got dressed for our big adventure. We strapped on some boots and in a flash, we were sneaking through the bush like Marlon Perkins, stalking line to pull his tooth. In the beginning, you see a few of those giant house-sized tortoises. Then they move. It's really hard to conceive just how large they are. The tortoises may have scheduled the birds and bees show. I don't know. I do know that they all started the show at the same time. The first act started under a bush. A little modesty before all the tortoises were in the open doing the dance with no pants. Before the show, they were moving slowly. Once the show started, they moved like a high-speed train with no brakes. No brakes whatsoever. Something interesting to note, for an animal that lives for 150 years and has showtime almost daily, they sure are bad at it. I can only imagine that this is what date night looks like at the old folks' home. <laughs> All kidding aside, these creatures are amazing to see and experience. The Galapagos El Manzanillo is a lovely, lovely way to spend an afternoon. And we thoroughly enjoyed it. We did. We did. It was great. <laughs> but we laughed a lot. We laughed a lot. <laughs> and we did have like boots on. They were sneaking up on there. <laughs> There's some over there. There's some over there. <laughs> we well, you know, looked like an army platoon in battle. We were down low. Aren't there bodies? Oh my goodness. Oh, you didn't have to worry about that. They were just And even all of them were putting on a show. Some of them were just following <laughs> along. <laughs> okay. Minding their own business. Minding their own business? Well, there was a lot of show. Day three, Bartolo and Baja Sullivan's Island. Sea lions were everywhere. Sea lions are cute, but these babies are the best. This one could not find his mother, and the adults let him know about it. Bartolone and Bod Sullivan Islands are two of the best places to witness the incredible biodiversity of the Galapagos. Bartolone Island is a volcanic island. The island is known for its stunning scenery and iconic pinnacle rock formations. That all sounds great, but to get to the top, we had to climb a lot of stairs. We lost a few of our trip, folks. 
due to heat and the length of the climb. When we did get to the top, the view was worth it. Plus, it was a hard climb. Violet Sullivan Island is a smaller island just off of Santa Cruz's island coast. We went snorkeling on this island. This was the first time Mimi had ever swam with sharks. Did he have tips on the top of the white tip? Or, oh, so he's a white tip. She also had an up close encounter with the sea lion. <laughs> How did that go, Mimi? Up close. It was up close. It was really up close. You didn't even know what it was, did you, when it was happening? It was right as I'm facing That's great. It was great. It was great. We got some excellent videos of the blue foot and boobies. That was a big thing right there. We had a lot of fun on these islands and can't wait to see what we have to do on day four. Okay, G, this one's all about you. Let's go diving. Let's go. Diving the Galapagos Islands means giant creatures. There's not a lot of coral, no macro type stuff. Sharks, rays, and sea lions, that's the ticket you will see. You do see a lot of king angelfish and a lot of starfish. The water is cold, so heavy neoprene is a must. Every now and then, you run into something enormous. I mean, it's really massive, like this guy was 19 feet wide. Using our diver as a measure, we saw two of these manta rays, the largest G has ever seen. As quick as they were there, it was gone. Sea lions love to keep your attention. While you are watching the mother do her flips, the baby slips out and escapes. I love swimming with sea lions. Their endless curiosity and speed will keep you laughing through the whole dive. While they are doing their show, they are also hunting. Never a dull moment. I love the animals, but the reef and the cold were brutal. All in all, the Galapagos was another checklist on my bucket list that I couldn't wait to do. And thanks for going and helping me get there, Mimi. Well, you know how I always know when you guys enjoy your dimes? No, how? You come back and talk and talk and talk and talk, and you guys talked a lot about what you saw. <laughs> so in other words, we talked too much. <laughs> And it's all now or no. It was really neat to see. I mean, we've, we've never dove with so many sharks at once. And and the large animals that were coming in, the sea lions were everywhere. As you had the ray, y'all get oh, the ray. that ray so much. I mean, there's like the shadow that it kind of split. I mean, we were just swimming along, and I was a murk, and that was holy smoke. So, yeah, that that was really cool. It's hard diving, though. It, it's not easy diving. So uh, it's not for the faint of heart. So that's day five. Let's see what's on day six. Day five, Tortuga Bay. Tortuga Bay, nestled amidst the enchanting Galapagos Islands, is a paradise for both natural enthusiasts and beach bummer you like. Beach bums. It's pristine white sands, crystal clear water, and vibrant sea life make it a haven for relaxation and exploration. But what truly sets Tartuga Bay apart is its unique blend of tranquil and adventure, a combination that makes a simple walk along its coastline an unforgettable journey. From the moment you step onto the soft, sugar-like sand of Tortuga Bay, you're enveloped in a world of serenity. The gentle rhythm of the waves crashing against the shore provides a soothing soundtrack, while the warm tropical breeze caresses your skin, carrying with it the sweet scent of salt and sea. Enjoy three minutes of just walking on the beach.
As our plane ascended, leaving behind the emerald peaks and turquoise waters of the Galapagos, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness mixed with a surge of gratitude. The islands had cast their spell on us for sure, weaving their magic into our very being. From the playful antics of the giant tortoises to the graceful ballet of the blue-footed boobies, every encounter had been an adventure and every moment a treasure. That was a bucket list. It was. It was. It was a great, great trip. And I want to take a second just to shout out to our travel folks who planned our trip for us. And it was an adventure from the moment we left the United States until we got back. And that was uh, Metro Touring. They were a great company to work with and would work with them again in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. And one of the things that made it so difficult was uh, the upheaval in Peru. Mm -hmm. And so we were actually supposed to go to Machu Picchu because there was a mass upheaval in Peru. We couldn't go to Peru. So they literally, about a week out, had to redo the entire trip. So. Uh, we got to see some hidden gems that and they don't normally send people to uh, the, hacienda. In the hacienda. That that was a place that honestly it would be worth going to Ecuador just just to go just to go there. That was really a cool place if you want to get away. It's got rooms for seven and seven seven rooms. I mean, so you're never it's never busy. Uh, we actually took up the entire property except for one room mm -hmm. and uh, so our group was there that was really cool the galapagos uh it'd be nicer to have maybe a few more days yeah. or maybe do a liverboard i'd like to go back and then travel to the different islands every day right. so those are some things that we really picked up on there truly loved the trip yeah. i mean the people were fantastic the tour company was fantastic enjoyed it tremendously would do it again make a few edits but the Galapagos the Hacienda or just shining shining stars the old cathedrals the beautiful flowers of the flowers right. are amazing in Ecuador I would I would go again what would you edit you said you'd make some edits um Quinkle was beautiful it just wasn't my favorite and I think part of it was what it took to get there, but it took all day to get there. But and and part of that was because of oh, the no, lane slides. Yeah, were, the, the lane slides had taken the road. I think out. we were tired. We were very tired. And and I I would also maybe do Galapagos you know, really early in our trip, and then come maybe come back to the Hacienda right after the Galapagos because at the Hacienda you can rest. The Galapagos has so much to see that you are going, 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 going. Well, that's a great observation. Yeah, honestly, yeah, you could fly to Guayaquil or to Quito because those two have flights that go to Galapagos, and that's the only way you get there. So you could, especially if you're going to fly in one day and then mm -hmm. spend the night, uh, Guayaquil would be uh, right, that'd be your plane. Uh, that would be the place because. Quito is very busy. I mean, the traffic is horrible. And uh, I mean, it's a very large city. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, it is in the mountains and there's mountains on each side of you and uh, and the people were wonderful, but the traffic. Yeah, ooh, it was hard to get around. It was, where Guayaquil, even though it's a much larger city, it had the infrastructure. It had interstates and those kind of things. So if I was going to do that, I'd fly into Guayaquil, then I would go to the Galapagos, do whatever I was going to do, whether it be a liveaboard or stay at Santa Cruz, and then come back uh, to the Hacienda, which again, you're going to fly into Guayaquil. The only thing about that is from Guayaquil to the Hacienda, the roads are horrible. And that's about a three hour tour. And it's like Gilligan's Island. It's a, it's a rough three hour tour. If you really affluent, you might charter a helicopter and fly you uh, to the <clears throat> farm. That would really be the best of all worlds. And we went during the rainy season. So it had rain, Leo, like we talked about the storm that night that knocked the power out. Maybe we should go back when it's not during the rainy season. That's true. They were just getting to the change part. Mm -hmm. So maybe we would edit the, the tour that way. The timing? Yeah. But I, I, it was still a beautiful place. It, it was, the people were super nice. Uh, we were there during uh, the festival. 
carnival. Carnival. And we like to go to the different things. Now, one of the funny things that they do at Carnival down there is they spray shaving cream on you. Yes. And they love to spray it on tourists. And one of our uh, partners, he doesn't pay a lot of attention. So on the day of Carnival, he, he got hit a lot. He had a lot of he, Yeah, he was wet. <laughs> so if you do go down there to see that, understand they're going to do that. And it, that's just what they do. Just fun. It's yeah. all in fun. It, it's all in fun, but it, it, it kind of got a little old with him. Yeah. <laughs> it was, overall, it was a super fantastic trip. Again, I'd use Metro Touring. Yeah, for anything that and they did not pay us to say that <laughs> we did not get anything <laughs> absolutely not they were just good to work with um great trip encourage anybody to go on that trip yeah uh, especially with the education side of it. yes it, it it really was an education it was a 100 education with the people you meet all of the different places uh it, it was wonderful mm -hmm.